Good morning, everyone. Welcome back to my channel. My name is Sammy Chu. Today is a very special day because I'm outside, and it's good to be outside after such a long time being quarantined at home. Now, um, today it's just not me, but my family uh, and myself are together uh, for this vacation for three days. And it doesn't mean that we are um, away from Bible study because we need to study the Bible, the Word of God every day. Now, um, I want to show you the temporary RV that we are renting today, and then we're going to jump into uh, the Word of God. All right, so let's check it out. Uh, yesterday, I drove RV for the first time, and it was very nervous, but it's good to be out here. Wow, isn't this beautiful? Can I take a few seconds to pray? Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for this beautiful nature that you created. Father, please help us to enjoy you and enjoy your creation and to glorify you. We thank you, we praise you. In Jesus' holy name I prayed. Amen. Okay, so I want to go, I want to walk over there and sit on the bench and I want to study the Bible together with you. Today, I want us to look at Ephesians chapter 5, verses 22 through chapter 6, verse 3. So today is a summary. Wives, be subject to your own husbands as to the Lord. For the husband is the head of the wife, as Christ also is the head of the church, he himself being the Savior of the body. But as the church is subject to Christ, so also the wives ought to be to their husbands in everything. Husbands, love your wives just as Christ also loved the church and gave himself up for her, so that he might sanctify her, having cleansed her by the washing of water with the word, that he might present to himself the church in all her glory, having no spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that she would be holy and blameless. So husbands ought also to love their own wives as their own bodies. He who loves his own wife loves himself. For no one have ever hated his own flesh, but nourishes and cherishes it, just as Christ also does the church, because we are members of his body. For this reason a man shall leave his father and mother, and shall be joined to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. This mystery is great, but I am speaking with reference to Christ and the church. Nevertheless, each individual among you also is to love his own wife even as himself, and the wife must see to it that she respects her husband. Children, obey your parents and the Lord, for this is right. Honor your father and mother, which is the first commandment with a promise, so that it may be well with you, and that you may live long on the earth. Amen. Friends, as I see this passage, it really reminds me of the importance of family. Uh, these days, a lot of people, especially younger people, do not believe in the family anymore because they say, now why do we bother ourselves to get married because I can just live myself and I can live for my own life. However, the marriage, as we can see, as we saw in this passage, is instituted by God. And it is just more than two people, man and woman, living together, having children, and living happily after. It's much more than that because the marriage relationship between husband and wife is reflection of the relationship between Christ and the church. And we saw the level of love that Christ showed to his church because he gave himself up for her and there was a clear purpose it was to sanctify her present her in present her in all her glory to himself so we saw we see the intimate relationship and the perfect sanctification that Jesus did for his church and likewise husbands like myself we need to love our wife and we need to value our wives the most among all the people and also wives need to subject to um, their husbands but not because they are inferior to the husband but it is reflection of God's uh, the relationship between the church and Christ so this is all about the relationship between the church and Christ and through marriage we experience every day 
the gospel message, the gospel truth. So marriage is so important. And also in chapter 6, we learn the relationship between uh, the parents and the children. Children need to obey their parents. And tomorrow we're going to look at verse 4, which is about uh, the father's relationship with his children. But at least in this uh, first three verses in chapter 6, it really shows that the obedience to the parents have a promise, that it's a promise of living well and long life on the earth. But also, also it reflects the relationship between God the Father and us. What should we do as His children? We need to obey Him because He is our Father. He is the loving Father. He is not abusive Father. He loves us so much. And what we can do is to obey Him. Listen and obey. Because obedience means uh, listening and doing. It involves doing as well. So it really unpacks the great truth about marriage, uh, the family relationship. So we can know more about the church and the Christ and God the Father and us through marriage and family relationships. So let's cherish this all together. And let's pray together for our families. Heavenly Father, we thank you. We praise you for the family that you created. Father, many times we just take it for granted. And we, um, we don't think much. We don't really commit to the family. But Father, please help us to understand this truth that we learned today. So that it will not be just learning, but it will be able to obey and uh, implement in our lives. So that we can truly cherish the gospel message. The message about you and the church. The message about you and your children. So we not only we enjoy our marriage relationship, but ultimately enjoy our relationship with you. We thank you, praise you. In Jesus' holy name, I pray, amen.